Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about my observations now that I have been pressing heavy six days a week, and I've not been doing any tricep isolation work. Uh, for those who are aware, historically, and a lot of people will come in and it's always funny when they say this, you're like, well, you should really isolate your arms because, you know, your, your other muscles overpower them, especially when they see uh, photos of my back and things like that, like I have up on Instagram. Uh, people say those things, but they don't realize the truth is arms are the only thing I've really isolated historically. And it's even though I'm not a bodybuilder, not interested in bodybuilding, it's always just been a point of ego for me because my arms don't grow particularly well. I don't have the best insertions. I have really long arms uh, relative to the rest of my body, which has always made me a good deadlifter, but it's always been an issue for me. And so I have tended to always isolate arms and occasionally I'll take some time away from isolating arms, but I always go back. So the truth is I don't actually isolate the other stuff for the most part, maybe occasionally hamstrings, occasionally hamstrings, but I don't isolate the other muscles. They just grow faster for me. And so I've tended to always do uh, arm work for isolations. But you know, one of the things I've been talking about lately is the fact that a lot of isolation movements can really aggravate a lot of problems because isolation movements aren't necessarily the best way to gain size or strength. And I think we all agree on that. But I've always said, you know, you, you probably could stand to do some isolation work, particularly for your weak points. In my case, it's never really worked out, meaning when I follow my own advice there that I've given for years and years and years, it doesn't really work. It doesn't work for me. And the problem I've always noticed when I go through phases of a lot of heavy pressing is that I get elbow tendonitis sometimes, you know, around these tendons, and that's when I deload. When I start to get inflammation in these tendons, not really tendonitis, but just pain in them, I know to deload because again, I tore a bicep many years ago. And I had about three weeks of warning before I did it, and I just pushed through. So I've always been a believer in deloading when you start to get inflamed connective tissue. Now, in this case, uh, I was back to doing tricep work again when I was filming workouts last year, you guys remember, I was doing tricep extensions. And I was having to take deloads. And the same thing after I would do curling, sometimes I felt like my chin-ups were causing me to need to deload and stop doing chin-ups and things for a week. Uh, because again, I was getting connective tissue pain in that bicep that I tore before. And it's like I've told people, it's not the heavy pressing that causes elbow pain. It's your tricep isolation movements. When you do too many of them, you pick the wrong exercises. And again, people need to understand, they need to understand that your body is not meant to isolate muscles. They are not normal movement patterns. We have to go out of our way to do it. It's not a normal movement for us to isolate anything. And that's one reason people cheat on isolation movements because that's your body's natural inclination to just cheat on these things. Uh, but it tends to put connective tissue into weird strains and things that they're not really intended to be in. And it can cause overuse injuries. It can cause you to overtrain in certain areas faster, require you to deload reduce your turtle workload on your big lifts. In some ways, I feel like it can be counterproductive. And so when I was doing my concurrent training, back before I eased back into this Bulgarian style again, I stopped doing all isolation movements. I stopped. And I noticed I didn't get it weeks that I should have, like I would progress to a certain point on my floor press, my overhead press, that I wasn't getting some of the inflammation I would normally get that many weeks into a heavy training cycle. I went right into my Bulgarian training a few weeks ago without deloading first, right? Nothing. I just went right in and I have set PRs every single week, every single week. And I can tell you guys right now, six days a week, I press heavy. And when I say press, I mean full range of motion, full lockout. I press overhead over 200 pounds or I floor press over 300 pounds six days a week. One of those two movements gets done pretty heavy. And no, those aren't the heaviest numbers in the world, and they're going to keep going up because I've already told you guys I'm going to bench 400 again. I'm going to overhead press 250, strict press. Those are coming. I mean, yesterday I got a 225 strict standing press off the chest, from a dead stop off the chest, and I held the lockout for two seconds. And that's what I've been doing. Even my heavy maxes, I try to hold the lockout even. Again, the sort of stuff people worry about is going to make their elbows hurt. And I can tell you, even after having done a two-month phase of concurrent training, 
but all with low reps, doing triples, either heavy triples or volume triples on every workout. Not deloading and going straight into Bulgarian training. I have PR'd every single week, sometimes more than once a week on my big presses. I press six days a week. I do no isolation movements. I am having zero inflammation, nothing. I don't feel any pain in my triceps and my tendons and my elbows. And that's, again, kind of confirming something for me. I'm getting stronger. And a few people have said that my triceps look bigger. And that's a subjective thing. You know, we can argue about that. Some people said your triceps look like they're growing. Well, that would make sense. I've put pounds on two different pressing exercises, right? I've consistently put pounds on them, and I train heavy presses six days a week. So, yeah, it's reasonable to assume I probably am growing a little bit of tricep. So if I'm making gains in my tricep, triceps, it's tricepticons, I'm making gains in them, I'm getting no inflammation when I normally do get inflammation, usually every six to eight weeks sometimes I have to deload pressing, I haven't had to at all. What's the variable? It's not lack of heavy pressing, it's not lack of locking out, I'm doing enormous amounts of that, I'm PR, I'm getting stronger every week, I'm not getting the inflammation. <clears throat> what changed? not isolating the triceps. So I'm getting stronger, not getting having any issues, and I don't see any deloads coming just yet. And I'll deload when I need to. Uh, I don't seem to need to deload right now. Kind of goes back to the point I've made of, you've got to be careful with isolation movements. And as much as people want to pimp them, I am leaning more and more in the direction. And I've never been anti-isolation. That's what people need to remember. Most of my programs have isolation movements in them. I've done tons of curls and tricep extensions on camera. The more research I read and the older I get and the more I experiment with my own body, the more I realize the older we get, the less it makes sense to isolate muscles because our connected tissue and connected tissue recovery starts to become a hell of a lot more important as we age. And in my experience, I'm finding isolation movements do nothing but aggravate that. It's not like I gain any muscle from isolation movements. I don't. You might. And the research says you should. It says you should. I don't ever get anything noticeable from it. I'm growing without doing any right now. I'm growing any, without doing anything over three reps. I don't do anything over three reps. Ever. I don't even warm up over three reps, except maybe the empty bar for five. Five. Yeah, my triceps seem to be growing. They're getting stronger. My pressing is getting stronger. My lockouts are getting stronger. And I'm not experiencing connective tissue inflammation. I'm really getting the best of both worlds there. And the main change is higher volumes of heavy pressing. Heavy pressing all the time. That's how you get stronger. That's how you get your triceps stronger. That's how you get everything stronger. But I'm not experiencing the negative effects. So, I mean, I have to conclude that what I've been saying is a, a possibility, is right, does seem to be the case. This is what there are other coaches out there saying. Ripto will tell you the same thing. A lot of these bigger names out there kind of say, well, you know, probably not the best idea to, to isolate muscles unnecessarily. Uh, body's not made to work that way. A lot of coaches will tell you that. And I understand a lot of guys out there and a lot of experts will have you do tons of isolation. But I've noticed, again... I'm leaning in the direction of what these guys are saying, uh, and I'm not experiencing these problems. And here's the thing. How many of these guys out here, again, who you see do all this isolation movements, complain about their elbows, complain about their knees, they have to wear wraps, they have to wear sleeves, everything else. I don't think it's a coincidence. And again, I have to note with what's happened with me recently, my pressing is going up phenomenally. My triceps are growing, and I'm not isolating them. Again, just my anecdote, but there is a good logical explanation behind it. Uh, and like I said, if we go with the evidence-based stuff, the evidence that I'm seeing more and more suggests to me that for strength athletes, isolating muscles may very well be largely a waste of time. Maybe a waste of time completely. Just food for thought. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.